On today's show, we shine a spotlight on artists who have grit and determination, and all of that comes out in their art. I talk like this, like I have a loud voice, you know. And he's saying, you know, I, I can't help what I am. I'm a monster. It was important for me to, to show a brown woman in a position of, she's got choices. Hello and welcome to CBC Arts Exhibitionists. I'm your host, Amanda Paris. This is the TV show that isn't here for the celebrity gossip. We don't care who's wearing what or who's dating who. We care about the art and the artist. Today, we are focusing on artists with backbone, the ones who have demonstrated their mettle and their determination. We begin with an artist who's not afraid to do what tampon commercials have feared doing for years. Be real about the blood. Carla Monterosa is an artist from Vancouver who takes the intimate things society has told us to keep quiet, menstrual blood, body hair, masturbation, and turns them into brilliant and funny personal illustrations. Uh, hi, my name is Carla Monterosa and I am an illustrator and animator. Uh, the main focus of my work is the awkwardness of bodies. Ugh. Things like menstruation and masturbation and just embarrassment, like everyday misfortune. Uh, no. uh, 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 so I'm currently working on a bi-monthly comic for this agency based out of Los Angeles called Adolescent. And my webcomic for them is called This Week Inside My Body. And it's just like a little inside of the drama that goes inside the, the body, the human body. Experiences from like acid reflux or being horny. I drew a piece called That Feeling When Your Tinder Is Poppin'. And it's just like this brown woman in, like, in a garden of penises. And I just wanted to like portray that, that feeling of like Ooh, I have so many options. Look at all these people I could go out with. It was important for me to, to show a brown woman in a position of, she's got choices. I don't know if humor and tenderness are things that come naturally to me or if I actively try very hard to achieve that. The vehicle of tenderness is just very effective to get away with talking about things that maybe I wouldn't be able to get away with if I tried like a, like a more crude approach. Yeah, making people laugh is really, it feels really nice. Uh, I started doing improv in 2014 and it was terrifying immediately. Doing improv is something that happens in the moment. It's not like animating where it takes two months. Emily had to come, like stay at home, Emily. A very important link between my work in performing uh, versus my work in animation is that, yeah, my work in performing, I use my physical body and in my animation and illustration work, I talk about things I experience with and through my body. So anything that helps take any seriousness away from my body is great. Anything that helps put my body in a situation of, yeah, you can laugh at it, that's great. Yeah, I, I'll take it. Speaking of fierce women, today is the queen of Canada's birthday. No, I'm not talking about you, Elizabeth. Celine Marie Claudette Dion was born 50 years ago today, the youngest of 14 kids. In celebration of Celine Dion's birthday, we've asked six artists from across Canada to create gifts you'll be seeing throughout the episode inspired by different milestones from her life. All hail Queen Celine. Coming up, we are spending the day with Polaris Prize winning musician Lido Pimienta. Yeah. 
Celine Dion owns every stage she steps on, and musician Lido Pimienta does the same. But Lido also uses that platform to make space for her audiences, encouraging women of color, non-binary, and non-able-bodied people to come forward while asking those with privilege to step back. Lido has received an extraordinary amount of hate, anger, and pushback, but none of that has stopped this fierce musician. Here's our correspondent, April Eliermo, to tell you more. A couple of years ago, my friend Lido Pimienta played a tiny concert that I organized, and now she's a Polaris Music Prize winner. She's been a really powerful force in making space for women, black and indigenous folks, and people of color. She's been assaulted and attacked for her activism, but nothing can keep Lido's badass spirit down. Lido's an amazing multi-talented artist and a full-time loving mother. Today, we're gonna get to go visit her at home and see what really drives her. Hi. Hey. <laughs> Hi. Oh, no. Have um, a visual art side, and I also make music. I am a singer, songwriter. I know that everything that I have is. It's, it's a gift, it's a direct gift from my indigenous roots. So being a strong, resilient woman is something that you can see so easily in my performance or in my artwork. Wow. So this is my textile work. So I'll just go and I'll just like decorate my stage so when you go it seems like you're in a, yeah, in a theater. What... So my indigenous background is Wayu from the north coast of Colombia. Do you want to show us the why you crafts that you brought back? This is beautiful. And so your aunt made it. Yeah. The memories that I have is just rocking back and forth in the Chinchorro with my mother. That memory just helps me be a, a mother. Somehow I connect taking care of my son and, and teaching him who he is, where he came from. Like, I'm pretty sure I'm pregnant right now. I am not gonna buy a crib. I'm gonna put a hammock above. Um, it's very attached to my art, and very attached to the textiles that I do and, and, and in the movement of the Chinchorro and just being together. And that movement that helped me dance and that movement that helped me sing. And everything that I do, you, you, just, you just see it. It's just so obvious in everything that I design because I'm just so heavily influenced by my own history and my own culture. I ask the audience to rearrange, and then I'll ask the women to go in the front. And then I ask the white women to go behind the women of color, non-binary, and non-able-bodied people in the audience. We just did it in Halifax. And at some point in the show, there was one white woman who refused to move. The gesture is just to show brown women we don't take up not even 10%. You know, we're all together still. I mean, to me, it was just another show, but for some reason, this has caused quite the stir. But then I get all the beautiful comments from people being like, don't stop. I've never felt so good at a show. I never felt so safe at a show and like all this stuff. So I'm like, all right, there's my son. Well, well, well. I am a mother. I, I am a mother. It's the, 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 the thing that makes me the most proud. <laughs> Kids, come eat! It's something that gives me a lot of motivation and drive in the work and the kind of work that I do and the kind of artist that I want to be one day. And you're not done. And that's the most exciting part, is that this is nothing. I'm going to be done when I'm texting regularly with Solange. But I don't want to have to sing in English to do it, and I don't want to have to sing in that kind of way, like, I can't do it. <laughs> oh, you told me you love me, and I can't, I can't. I talk like this, like I have a loud voice, you know. Do you know any other fierce artists who are also moms that deserve to be recognized? Let us know on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter. Our handle is at CBC Arts. We go from fierce musician mama to fear-inducing filmmaker. 
Patrick Bateman in American Psycho, Grace Marks in Alias Grace, Canadian director Mary Heron has made a career out of plunging audiences into the minds of complicated villains. There aren't too many female filmmakers who have pushed the limits of psychological thrillers quite like Mary, and she traces it all back to one movie that changed her life. The film that changed my life was M by Fritz Lang. And I was 16 and living in London, and I started going to the National Film Theater. I'd never seen German Expressionism before, but it's German Expressionism filtered through realism, and it's the story of a child murderer. A very dark film for a teenager to like, but I guess, you know, start as you mean to go on. Ein Außenseiter verdirbt uns das Geschäft und den Kredit. Eventually, all the criminals in the city decide to get together and, and trap him, and they hold him on trial. The star is Peter Lorre. It's a really profound performance. He's playing, you know, one of the worst people in the world, a child murderer, but by the end when he's like a rat cornered, you know, being chased through the streets, you also feel profoundly sorry for him. As he says, he's a monster, and he can't help being a monster. I mean, I guess I'm a pretty sick guy. You know, when I was doing American Psycho, I did think about M because this is great scene. The scene that, that impressed me most is the trial when the criminals put the monster on trial. And he's saying, you know, I, I can't help what I am. I'm a monster. And, and it helped me understand this character, Baton, that he's a monster. There's no redemption for him. In a way, his, his hell is to be himself. My punishment continues to elude me, and I gain no deeper knowledge of myself. No new knowledge can be extracted from my telling. This confession has meant nothing. I think of all the things that have been written about me, that I am an inhuman female demon, that I am an innocent victim of a blackguard forced against my will and in danger of my own life. I love very complicated characters, especially very complicated female characters, which you don't always find. You could not get a more complex character than Grace Marks. It's not excusing the crimes, it's not forgiving them, but it's understanding them. And I wonder, how can I be all these different things at once? Coming up, we meet one artist who's made it her mission to expose our complicated relationship with nature. There are no real how-tos for being vulnerable in front of a live audience. There are some things that can't be taught in a video tutorial. For singer and dancer Callie Technis, she had to learn the hard way. She had to take a moment where she froze on stage and transform herself into something powerful. I find words very limiting to our experience as human beings. Even the words we choose to express our own thoughts don't even capture the extent of what we're feeling or what we're going through. I'm a singer, songwriter, dancer, and visual artist from Montreal. I call myself Cali Technus because it's a general term for artist in Greek, meaning master of craft. Mm -hmm. 
Right now, I'm working on an EP called Wet Paint. It captures the start to something wonderful, an introspective journey of life as a 24-year-old, which, like wet paint, can sometimes get messy. I mainly wanted to promote the idea that vulnerabilities are not weaknesses, but opportunities for growth. Years ago, I had my first solo dance performance and I completely froze on stage. It was beyond mortifying. But after recovering from the initial embarrassment, I learned something about myself and about my perspective on performance prior to that incident. I'd always done choreography with other dancers and placed emphasis on dancing in unison. When it had come time to perform alone, I couldn't just rely on dancing methodically in sync with others. It was about relating to an audience, and I was solely responsible for conveying some sort of emotion to them. That's when I learned that dancing alone could be more liberating than anxiety provoking. And ironically, the vulnerability experienced in being alone and exposed to an audience of hundreds or even thousands is one of the most freeing moments to me artistically and spiritually. I especially wanted to include the topic of vulnerability into the EP because I found that many people my age tend to neglect its power and see it instead as a weakness. So I wanted to showcase that acknowledging our vulnerabilities enables self-love, which in turn allows us to love others. I'm really happy to now be able to use art in a way that doesn't deny my vulnerabilities, but actually acknowledges them. It's very empowering, and using a fusion of art disciplines to help communicate that message of self-acceptance, being able to share that with the world, that is truly priceless. We live in a world of panels and political pundits where literally everything can be argued. But this next artist has an uncanny ability to laser cut through the noise and fake news and focus on the truth of what's happening. Tony Hamill points to violence, weirdness, affection, all of the strange ways humanity interacts with this planet. I'm not interested in art for the sake of art. I think that as artists, it is our perhaps duty to be fully immersed in the society in which we live. So, you know, some people may say it's propaganda. Well, so be it, you know, if I can help raise awareness about certain things, then why not? My mental illness is a big factor in uh, who I am and what I do. I, I use it as a cathartic tool to deal with my demons. Anger is a fundamental part of borderline personality disorder, which I have. And so you have this anger, you have no idea where it's coming from. Uh, so having an outlet that allows me to, you know, channel this anger, it's wonderful. Because of the bipolar disorder, I have a sensitivity to things that are deeper than the surface. I, I feel more empathy. Maybe I, I do see myself in those particular situations and I, you know, how would I help myself if I were in that situation? Maybe uh, doing this, I, I help others. I fight for the underdog and maybe that's where it's coming from, uh, my pre psychological predispositions. Maybe too much now, but... A lot of my work is a focus on climate change and global warming because I think that is the most important 
issue of our generation. If we can stop or change anything at all, this should be our number one priority. And I just don't see the political will to do so. Now I'm working on another series. It's called the High Tides and Misdemeanors. This new series allows me to go beyond our relationship with the environment and, and also to tackle some social issues and um, political issues that are, you know, dear to my heart. I leave the viewer, you know, free to interpret the piece that I'm working on. I hope that people will take away from viewing my paintings an awareness about whatever subject matter I'm tackling. If there's an artist you think should be on CBC Arts Exhibitionists, let us know. Send us a message on Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook. Our handle is at CBC Arts. I'll be back next time with even more artists from Laketon to Campbellton. Until then, keep creating and innovating. But before I go, I'm gonna leave you with a time-lapse video of a pretty fierce woman by Calgary-based artist Mia Oki. Peace. <laughs>